For those of you who don't know, I've been a violinist for 18 years. I get it. I'm old. I'm heading into 19 years of playing violin. So uh, I've been trained in music, went to music school. Yeah, I, I made violin. I also play electric bass as well. So I, I have quite a bit of knowledge. I've played in a symphony. I've played in orchestras my entire life. And I am always happy for us to dive into some music together. Um, so it should be interesting seeing uh, one of Genshin's concerts live. I, I didn't get to watch this last time they did it. So I saw Hon Honkai's concert, though. I just didn't see Genshin's one. Oh, wow, it's starting already? I'm gonna go grab a bagel. Oh no. I don't have time. Oh, who's this conductor? Oh, hmm. They have a different con. Uh huh. Wow. Ah, oh, an accompaniment piano as well. They have two pianists. Oh, yo! Oh, great pizzicato across the board. Wow. Yo, this is so cool! What the heck? The lot of traditional instruments is so beautiful. Like, what the heck? That's very interesting. Uh, the bow technique that they were using there is actually one where um, you hold it in the, its normal like set position. It's not like the broke hold, like my personal favorite bow hold. Um, and so, did it freeze? Is it skipping? She's Louise Genshin. Um, so what you do is it's um, more of an um, a swooping motion into the bow. So you put you actually apply more pressure when you get to the middle section of your bow. So that makes it done. So it like it has a very smooth motion of um, diminishing each time you like a diminuendo, if you will, um, every time you go in and out of the note, but also upon entry of the note as well. So I play with the middle section as being the heavier part. Oh, I love the style. So basically how this works is that it's like, it's almost like a bouncing off your string. It's very, it's very lifelike, very increases, very, um, oh, I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> it becomes more playful, more energized whenever you do stuff like that, whenever you create more motion with your bow itself. The more longedly you hold your bow strokes, the more longedly you, like, you create a smoother motion, the more sad and melancholy you can sound. You can have empowered notes doing it, but the pressure applied is a very different dynamic. The instrument goes so hard. Oh, God damn! Oh, was the first concert Mondstadt then? We should watch the first concert at some point. Finger picks are the coolest things that way. <laughs> oh, sorry, something so satisfying when watching live orchestras. Bo Unison. Bo Unison is like serotonin going into my brain. Like, in, um, in concert orchestras in particular, symphonies, symphonies, it's a little bit different. 
Um, but in concert orchestras, what you do is you have to have bow synergy. Like your bows must be doing the same thing constantly. Like, and if you mess up your bow strokes, fake it. You have to fake that you did it correctly. It's it's a very weird concept, but like the performance aspect is so important that like you gotta just do what you gotta do to get through at the end of the day. So like for example, if someone like messed up their bow stroke and they went up instead of going down, and everyone else is going the other way, they have to just fake it and go match everybody else and then get back out with the song after. Like it's. <laughs> Oh, so it's so satisfying seeing bow strokes with our in unison together all the time. It's so good. They're so good. <laughs> oh! Dang, that, that one hit nasty. Ooh. Long and bows? Long and bows for us, yeah. I used to play the Indian wooden flute. That was many, many years ago. I think about like 10, 15 years ago. I don't play it anymore at all. Not at all. I haven't played it literally since like a decade ago. <laughs> one but it's not it's not a sitar itself. Sitars are like um they're more like they have a very they have a much longer neck. And um the neck's like one it's really really long and then the base is like this little plump bulb. <laughs> it's very cute at the bottom. <gasps> oh sh shit we get to see you live we get to see you live Oh my god! Guys! Guys! No! What just happened? What just happened? What just happened? Please! I got hit with an ad. It stopped because I got hit with an ad. It stopped because I got hit with an ad. Genshin. Turn ads off on your channel. Genshin. Turn ads off. Are you kidding me? Again. 
就有坐满堂，共聚此时。I love her. I love her so much. I love her so much. Can I like? Can we like? Kenshi doesn't have their vods up, do they? Please. Please let us go back. Please let us go back. Frank. Frank. I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to... No. The concert is live on YouTube, guys. Can I do it on YouTube instead? Thank God. We're going back. We're going back and watching it. We're going back and watching it again. Ad, ad screwed us. We're not. We are not. Thank, thank you, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. She's so beautiful. She's so pretty. I love, I love seeing the performance aspect. Oh my god. Seeing like, seeing it performed by the per- oh. By the person is just so, it's so incredible. It's so incredible. Hearts in chat, boys. Hearts in chat. Oh, so incredible, so incredible. I'm sorry, I just, it's so, it's, oh. seeing her perform at live is insane. I want to just go back for a second and talk about parts of it. Like, look, the, the hand motions in unison so perfectly. Even down to the fingertips. Even the fingertips. Like, hold on, I'm just gonna show you guys really quick. I just wanna make sure I get, don't cover it. Give me a second. Like, look at the fingers. Look at the fingers. Even perfectly matched separation. The symmetry of her movement. Look at that. The balance. The balance within her movement is so precise. And then even when her arms are in different positions, they still create balance across her body. Look at the balance. It's... Look at that. You can see like the balance what I was talking about before. That it's always... And then if she ever has both of her hands to one side, like her head motions and her shoulder motions go like into the opposite, creating a constant balancing act. It's so beautiful. <sighs> so 
Dude, watching her tongue is so interesting too, the way her tongue moves. How? So cool! So cool! Okay, I love this song. This is a great song. This is a great song. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, my heart. My heart. <laughs> oh. I want to play one of these so bad. I want to play an Arhu so badly. <gasps> I like his hair. I want to play one so badly. Chat, can that be my Christmas present? Can we get me an Arhu for Christmas? <laughs> Pretty please. Self, self teach to learn it, but I'd be so down to. Drip marketing, yo, right? Facts, facts remain, facts. <laughs> for real, drip marketing, like for real though. <laughs> yeah. So, the eyes of a dragon. I don't recall the name. Of, I don't recall the name of this piece. Christmas when V Day is in September. Post Amazon wish list. Uh, I always get too nervous to post Amazon wish list. Maybe I should. Oh my god. Oh. I wonder if it is on Amazon. Could you imagine? I don't even know. We should look it up. It's true. My birthday is in September. Amazon. We're gonna find out now. Is it even on? Can I get an Arahu? Like. <gasps> they sell it on Amazon. genuinely do streams where I'm just learning how to play it. Like, that would be... That would be so cool. Whoa! YouTube, I can actually pause and talk about stuff. Oh my god, thank god. Okay, so here we'll see the second violin section, and even the violas in particular, going uh, with with this more like ja -ja 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 -ja, like creating this fill sound almost, right? And then we'll have our rather than having the violins taking the lead as they as you normally would see performed in most pieces that uh, Genshin does in general, is that this time they're letting the the like the brass and the woodwinds kind of fill in the air. So as you can see, we have like filling in all of that all of that space, 
and creating a commotion. It's creating the, the, the feeling. I know someone mentioned this before, like in, actually a few people mentioned this in my video before, where they're like, oh, can you talk about the musicality of what's happening? So I'm going to try to talk about a bit more of the musicality side versus the actual performance style of how it's done. Um, but basically, I'll talk about the performance style first because it's really fun to me. So what happens is in order to create what the sound that they're going for in particular, it's this very crunchy, um, uh, chaotic feeling, right? They want you to feel like almost this anxiety. So what they do is, is that they play with the middle of their bow, putting pressure in, allowing it the string itself to bounce upwards. So it causes your bow itself to almost have like a little be give back. It goes ba -ba, like it's like it's a little like give back. So each time your bow is able to actually controlly bounce back and forth as you push down into the string. So now you can watch this now and notice how their string bows are moving. That is one of the old school ho holds, dude. That is an old school hold that he's doing right here. This 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 cellist in particular. So like this one is like the common one that we do now. This is like modern. This is an old school hold. This is like this is not done anymore. This is that is very interesting to see someone who still does that. That's like a normally what happens is you get trained into doing this style in modern era. This is this is old era. This is crazy. Usually those who are play upright bass tend to use that bow hold. Not the uh not a cellist. Not a cellist at all. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, ooh! Well, we got a nice one though, dang! Okay! Oh, I love when they show shots of conductors. Okay, so every conductor, something I want to like, I want to teach you guys about really quickly too. Is I feel like this doesn't get talked about a lot in most performance analysis. Is the conductor's role? A conductor has so much control over the entire orchestra. Wow, this guy has a cell phone on his stand. That's never allowed. This guy is this guy is a rebel. He's a rebel. You you are not supposed to have your cell phone out. Um, but yeah, one of the, like the things that like. Um, <laughs> when it comes to conductors is that what they do impacts no matter how many times you've played a piece no matter how many times you performed it no matter what you recorded the conductor holds the control over the orchestra people think in orchestras that the conductor kind of keeps you in beat helps bring instruments back in so, so on and so forth no the conductor does so much more than that their responsibility is to make is to give life to your piece. For example, I'm gonna put my hand tracking on so I can teach you guys this really quick. This is a, it's something that I feel so underrated because people just don't know what conductors do. Okay, so a conductor basically will you know, so let's say we're going in four four time, right? Right. So the conductor can do this. They'll have one hand going with the beat, right? This other hand is becomes your indicator hand. The indicator hand has many different purposes. We can tell them to raise the volume, raise, you'll, you'll make direct eye contact with the section you intend to communicate with. 
So for example, if I look dead into like my violin's eyes, right? Into that section, I will do this while going, right? To tell them to like raise, raise your strength, be boisterous, right? Or I could do in soft, slow, softer, slower, quieter motions, quieter motions, right? Like bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, right? Uh, this hand, like, right? And then if we want it to be like everybody plays with like this gravitas, we go with both hands, both hands. That's when we do both hands, right? Boom, boom, right? We go across. And then there's a one motion in particular that's like one of the larger indicators as well, is that if you want the whole place to go into Viva Oblive is a certain type of style of play that's not normally used within Chinese music, but is used within uh, European music more so. And that one, we do a full body cross. So this is where we go bump, and then it goes across your entire body. Bump, bump, bump. Like that one? <laughs> that one's done more so uh, where we where we're from. But like in China, you'll, you won't really see that often. What you'll see the most is, is both hands cross over, which means to play with like gusto, to play loudly and passionately during that part for the entire ensemble. But if you see it with the other hand doing alternate motions, that's because they're indicating different things to different parts of the group. For example, let's say they've played this piece a million times, right? So even if they play this piece a million times, if the conductor hears, oh, wait a second, my my wood my woodwinds, right? Maybe my maybe my flutes, my flutes or my clarinets, oh, they're a bit too loud right now. They're not this is not okay, right? I, they will directly make eye contact with that section, especially the section leader of that of that partic particular instrument. And when you make eye contact with them, you'll look at them, indicate you'll give them a nod to show that this is the one you're you're communicating with, and then you'll indicate with your hands what they need to adjust. That is a very important thing. That's the reason why when you see like players playing the violin and such or playing any instrument, like they'll be reading their sheet music, sure. But all the time, your, st your stands are set at this weird angle like this so that you can constantly be seeing your conductor all the time. You need to be able to see your conductor all the time. And that's the reason why also that, that players are not allowed to play with their eyes closed. When you're playing in, a or when you're playing in an orchestra or a symphony, you are not allowed to play with your eyes closed. Right? When you're a soloist player, playing with your eyes closed is fine because you can get deeply like, into the music, into the sway of what's happening, right? Get lost in the sauce, if you will. But you cannot do that when you're in a symphony. You have to keep your eyes open. And that's why rarely you'll see people close their eyes. Some people will close their eyes for the most, maybe one bar, like four beats or whatever, depending on the situation, if they feel very into the music. But it's so rare because you could really screw over the entire people, the hundred people playing the music. You could screw them all over if you don't keep your eyes open. So those are some fun things. So the conductor's role is so important and people don't realize how important it is because it, it communicates all of those things. Because while you're playing, your section is the loudest in your ears, regardless of what ear pierce you have in. So the conductor needs to lead everything. So. See that? See that? See her head nod? She communicated particularly to this section. You can see her nod where she goes, okay. She nodded to this section first and then a massive head motion towards the choir. Did you see that? The massive head motion towards them. Right? You get their first nod, bail. Then literally she mouths. Oh, you can see her, slow, her go with the O, with the O mouth motion to show them this is like your moment. Like, oh, she takes a breath, looks at them, nods, right? All that communication towards this choir. All that communication. So cool, so cool. <laughs> Holy smokes, that choir is insane. They're so good. Oh, that was so good. Oh, that was so good.
go. L- listen, listen to how they resonate the note. Listen to how they, they all, oh, natural acoustics. Okay, there's acoustics that you can have, like amplifiers, such like that. Natural acoustics only occurs when you play in concert halls or sound engineered rooms, okay? This is natural acoustics. They lifted their bows off. Everyone, and it, you just hear it hang in the air. Oh, you hear, hear it. Listen, 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 listen. Oh my god. Because <laughs> look at this. Look, this, is how, this is how it happens. Look. Look at the ceiling. Look at the ceiling. You see these? You see how the ceiling's done like this? It's because how audio bounces. These are all done at weird angles. So that way when audio bounces and ricochets off, it can create this effect, right? When you go into recording studios, you'll see a bunch of sound padding, things to like, to silence out- outlanding sounds, right? Because you want to be able to control it through your editing. This is done though, so that you are, you don't have to edit anything. It's all done because the room design, the room design, yeah, the freaking walls and the, and the bleachers are all done so that it's able to resonate properly. Wild, wild, right? Wild, right? <laughs> the more you know, chat, there you go. I've already analyzed the song before, so I'm just gonna go hit premiere. And we're gonna, oh, it's done. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Learning so much now, I'm glad to hear. Thank you for explanation. No problem. No problem. I've done analysis of the song before, but I don't mind talking about it a little bit again. Bum 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 ba dum ba dum dum. Wow, she's very talented. Wow. So here, I'll just show you this a little bit again. So what you'll see here is that she has the strength to her bow. She's applying so much pressure near the tip that it creates such an even and balanced sound to the point where if you closed your eyes, you couldn't even tell which part of the bow she's playing with. That's a very, that's a very strong technique and ability to be able to have when playing violin is that we get ingrained this very early on in our learning. <laughs> but like what happens is though, is that a lot of the time you're able to create this meteor robust sound the lower you go on your bow, right? When you get higher, notes tend to be a lot more thinner, a lot, lot more airy. So you need to be able to press harder during these parts, but just with the right amount of pressure to make it sound even. And then to the listener, if you close your eyes for a second, you literally should not be able to tell which part of the bow she's playing with here. So close your eyes, listen to it, and try to see if you can hear if she's playing with the bottom or top of her bow. She's so good, you shouldn't be able to be able to tell. So good, so good. Very talented. This makes me miss performing. Place is so cool. Wow, she has the ideal lip type to play this instrument. That's crazy. Yeah, 
I talked about this uh, a bit before, I think. I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, actually. About lip types for playing wind instruments. There's different types of lips you could have just in general, right? Like, I mean, like, physical lips. Like, the lips that you have. That you, you yourself can check which type you have. There's two main types of lips we like to talk about when playing instruments. As we talk about um, a teardrop lip and then a flat lip. A flat lip is like the one that most people have where you're able to play flutes, you're able to play almost any wind instrument you want to. You have all the versatility in the world. A teardrop lip is when the middle section of your lip kind of puckers out a little bit. It has like almost like a little teardrop shape. <laughs> you have big black lips, well you got beautiful lips baby, you go play that brass instrument. Them shits be hitting for you, okay? Like that's, that's you got the ideal lip type for that if you have big lips. Like. So when you play that, you act, if you have a teardrop lip though, you actually are not supposed to play flute because you will not get the appropriate sound you're supposed to get out of them. You can play like clarinet, you can play like, you can play most brass instruments you can get away with, um, but flute you physically cannot play. Like you will not be good. You will not be good. You cannot play for longevities of time either. So it's like, she has the perfect lip type to play this instrument, which is really cool to see. I know it's like a really random note, but... <laughs> Happy Chinese New Year! <laughs> da -da -da. Oh, the conductor there! Did you see that? That was cool. That was really cool. Hold on. Oh, I love that. She used one of her arms, right? So I told you how like there's like one that like usually holds the beat, right? And the other arm it has m a multiple instances and indicators. She did the one big beat motion to show the new the new movement, raised her arm in a circular motion, brought it back down to her core, and then she moved she moved her body and her positioning to aim more towards the. Oh, hold on, ready? You can see right here towards the strings. Look at this. Look at her body movement. She took the step forward, aiming towards the strings, speaking to them lovingly with her left hand, her right hand still holding the beat. You can see that beautiful job by the conductor. Wow. Oh, she has a venti pin! She has a venti pin on! She has a little venti pin. It's so rich! It's so rich! Oh! Wait for the hold? Ready? Oh! The way that it echoes after! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh! Gorgeous! Oh my goodness! Oh! oh they're done! That's a, that's a final piece! Oh my goodness! The bow! The bow! Excellent job! Excellent job! So good! So good! I loved this! That was incredible! That was incredible! Holy smokes! Alrighty, gamers! <laughs> I love you guys. I will catch you later. Thank you so much for watching! And I really hope you guys hit the like button check out the new videos I'll be posting today. I'm gonna go edit them right now. Right now! <laughs> Catch you later, everybody. Thanks again for watching. See you soon. See you soon in my videos. <laughs>